Welcome to IORC. Today's session is with Nathan Seldes and Jackie Crinsley Roy. Let me introduce you to Nathan Seldes, President and Chairman of IORC. Welcome Nathan, I'm glad to have you in today's webinar. Before we start about IORC, can you share with me your background and how you ended up with being an expert on information overload? Uh, I can do that, yep. So basically, I'm a physicist originally, but I spent most of my career at Intel. I was 26 years at Intel in various positions. And the last 16 years of that were in a job I invented for myself, which we called Computing Productivity Manager, where my purpose was to identify new technologies and, and, and methods coming our way in computing and communication space and figuring out how to make people use them productively without losing their sanity. And in that job, I did a number of things. I brought in telecommuting and various web technologies and knowledge management. But the one thing that really stuck was information overload, which I realized was a problem very early in, in that job, in 1994 or 5. Mm -hmm. People started complaining. We had email in the company for less than a year. And already people were raising real complaints about how it was overloading them destructively and how they refused to even use it. So I started researching what was going on. I realized uh, what the causes were. And I started deploying solutions. And before long, somebody leaked the fact that I was doing it to the press. So Fast Company magazine came and interviewed me and published this in an article. And before you know it, I had maybe 60 different organizations worldwide contacting me for more information. And that included everybody. I mean, the, the US Army and the Salvation Army, literally both. And wow. everything between universities and schools and companies and startups, everybody had the same problem. So I started communicating with these people. And uh, gradually, this led to what will become IORG at some point. Okay. And I did wow. that at Tintel until uh, about nine years ago when I got tired of working in a cloth covered cube. I left Intel and now I'm doing whatever I want. I mean, I consult to organizations about information overload. I consult to startups about their products. I lecture, I do exhibitions in science museums. Basically, I'm having a good time. Well, that is where it's all about sharing information and having a good uh, time. So thank you so much. And, and before um, um, we continue, can you tell me where IORC stand for? Um, so let's go to the next slide. So that is probably going to appear in, in the next slide, which talks about our mission. IROC stands, of course, for Information Overload Research Group. And uh, we are a group of rather diverse people. We have people from industry, meaning the corporations. We have people from academia, professors. We have consultants and analysts and, and startup people all dedicated to reducing information overload, which is a problem of, of tremendous proportions today that is destroying the productivity and quality of life of knowledge workers worldwide. So our mission, here you have our official missions in, in official words, but basically we work to, to build awareness of the information overload problem, which everybody knows about, but nobody really is aware of the details of what exactly is going on. We try to create awareness, we try to drive research, define best practices, help contribute to creation of solutions, and share information that will guide and facilitate people doing something about this problem. And I want to stress a few points. First, we are about solutions. We're trying to lead to solving the problem, not just to understanding it. Second, we cross boundaries. This is something I'm particularly happy with. We collaborate across the, the traditional boundaries between companies and academia and between large companies and small companies. We bring together very diverse people because that way they can talk to each other. They all work in the same focus, but from different directions. So we can provide much better thought leadership and we can reach cutting edge solutions and ideas in a way that being a, a kind of monolithic organization would fail to do. Okay, so and, and who are all behind, um, um, you know, all behind the, the scenes? 
Uh, well, I can show you the IROG steering team members. We are run by an all-volunteer steering team whose membership changes over the years. Uh, I think we have a slide about that. Yeah, let, let's, yeah, exactly, next slide. Good, good. Oh, yeah. Here it is. So we have two slides about that, actually. Here you see myself as president and founder of this group. We have my co-founder, Jonathan Spira, who is also a director and vice president of research of this organization. This is a formal uh, nonprofit, so it has to have a board of directors, legally speaking. We have Dr. Monica Seeley of Mesmo Consultancy, who is a director and our secretary. We have Professor Marty Barif of the Illinois Institute of Technology, who is a director and our treasurer. We have Alfonso Aranda Arias from IBM, who is on the board of directors. We have Iran Abramson from No Mail, who is our marketing expert. We have Jackie Prince Leroy, who is from IBM and is our magician generally. She is able to make anything happen. It's quite unbelievable. We have, well, that's true. We have Mike Einstein, who is our techno geek and, and does wonders with our web problems. And he's also an interesting uh, cross discipline person himself. He is a business technology professional in a, in a pharmaceutical corporation, but he's also an adjunct professor in a number of universities. And he also consults on information overload. And on the next slide, we have Mark Powell from Email Logic, which is a company that provides training for organizations about information overload. And we have Lele Terenzani from IBM, better known as Dr. Connections, who is a communications guru and known for his webinars in this space. Then I want to stress, of course, everybody else, which are the people mm -hmm. who are not on our, our board or steering team, but who follow our activities and engage when they want to and, and contribute to our website and so on, which is basically, in principle, all of you guys watching this webinar. Exactly. So IOT was founded in, in 2007 by you and Jonathan Spira. Um, can, can you talk about its roots and, and tell also about um, the non-profit side of it? Uh, well, the original, original idea came to me when I was in uh, Redmond in, at Microsoft headquarters. I was visiting Microsoft Research and I was talking to Merit Rinsky, who is the manager there, and it turned out that we were very interested in the same things, even though we were from different corporations. And the idea came up, why don't we pull together people who are interested in this from different backgrounds and hold a workshop, which Mary volunteered to host in Redmond. We had a two-day workshop. At the time, we called it the Infomania workshop. We had uh, maybe a, a dozen or more people from different backgrounds and organizations. That's where I met uh, Jonathan Spira for the first time. He is one of our original members then. And we decided that the workshop was sufficiently productive that we wanted to continue to talk to each other. But then uh, it became clear that to do that, we need to register as an official nonprofit in the United States and for various technical and legal reasons. So we created IOG as a, a formal nonprofit and we launched it in 2008 in a face-to-face -face conference in uh, New York City, which actually created some, some news coverage and you know, it, it drew attention. It was the right time to do this. And then we've evolved over the years. We created in 2012 a crowdsourced repository of uh, information overload resources with, that we will discuss in a minute. Uh, we survived the various economic instabilities in subsequent years by moving from face-to-face -face conference to online webinars and other online activities. And right now we're stepping up our social media presence and webinar production. Right, and um, to, to add to that, um, we are on Twitter and we um, um, nearly daily um, send out messages, um, some with, with video information. So um, have a look and look us up uh, on Twitter and LinkedIn, um, and of course on our website. So what is IOC um, wants to achieve in, in 2018? Well, uh, main objectives this year, first we want to continue sharing knowledge, of course, via our resource center. 
we also decided to step up our social media presence. So we are definitely creating a lot more content on our various social channels, which we will share the, the addresses in a minute. And we are upgrading our website, which has fallen a bit behind, a bit old. And uh, we are doing a monthly webinars. Every month we are creating a new webinar, of which this is the first one. We can show you the plan of these webinars on our next slide. Here, you can see that we have plans for almost every month this year with different subjects that will be presented by different members of the team. And also in October, we will have a, a longer event. October is when we traditionally hold Information Overload Day, which we've been doing for, for many years. It was Jonathan Spira's idea originally, and it continues to this day. So these are the webinars, and, and I certainly invite everybody to note that, and the dates will be published on our website or our newsletter, and you're welcome to attend. Definite, definite. Um, and also share with your colleagues and friends, um, because um, um, this, this information overload is really um, something we all stumble on on, on a daily basis. As, as Nathan already mentioned um, at the beginning of, of the webinar. So on our website, we have the Information uh, Overload Resource Center. Can you share what this is uh, about? Certainly. This resource center is basically a moderated crowdsourced repository of links to stuff. So we don't have the stuff itself for copyright reasons, but we have the links that point at books and, and uh, webcasts and podcasts and blog posts and articles in the media and so on about information overload. And each of them has an entry and you can search them and so on. And the, the key point is we want this to be the world's best repository of information overload the knowledge. So we made it crowdsourced so anyone can submit content to it, but it is moderated. So one of us reads every submission to make sure it makes sense and to, to make sure it is formatted correctly. And this we can only do, of course, with your help. So if you're watching this, by all means, go to this web address at the bottom of this slide and submit content. And then we will moderate it and the rest of the world will be able to benefit from it. So, so Nathan, um, um, we have, of course, more, but can you also share something about overload um, solutions? Uh, we can do that. First, I'd like to, to mention what are the, the root causes of information overload. And I'm talking about information overload in, in knowledge work. So basically what you experience if you work at a computer, as opposed to information overload, uh, for example, fake news overload, which is a different kind of information overload, or information overload in the medical profession where you can't read all the new articles in your specialty. That's a different matter. But as far as information overload in, in office space, the, the problems we have today that grew out of a, a number of root causes. One is that our technology evolved very, very fast, whereas our behavior evolves at biological speeds, which are much slower. So every new technology that arrives, people deploy it immediately without stopping to think, should we change our behavior first to be able to benefit from it properly. So we can send uh, any kind of messages to anyone around the clock, so people do it, instead of saying maybe people actually prefer to sleep at night. Another problem we have is the problem of mistrust. Because the reason people send so much email that they know nobody will read is because they don't dare not to send it. Basically, they don't trust that their manager will notice them, that they will be part of the action, they have the fear of missing out, and all that goes to mistrust in the organization. As I like to say, it's a prisoner's dilemma. Everyone would prefer to send less email and receive less email. Nobody dares to be the first one to cut back. Right. And then there's the fact that organizations don't have serious norms about communication culture. And anyone can set up a meeting anytime they want, invite 10 people to sit in it without a clear agenda. Anyone can send an email to 100 people at once. And there are no norms that say, this is okay, this is not okay. This is what you send during the weekend. This is what you don't. And this is the response time we expect and when. So these are, are the causes. Right. The result is, is the mess we see 
where information overload has rich proportions that destroy productivity, but also destroy people's quality of life and interfere with our ability to think. Definitely. What else can we say about this? Um, so the, the, let, let's take a look at the trends, right? So um, in the evolution of, of IO problems over the years, um, how, how do you see the upcoming years? Well, what I'm seeing is there's two trends that, that happened. Uh, one is that social media added to the overload that originally was limited just to email. Obviously, we have very many channels and we're not using them optimally. And uh, the other problem is the mobile access, which gives us free, immediate access to anyone on the planet practically, 24 by 7. It used to be you would go home at the end of the day, that was the end of work, not anymore. And this has created a huge overload, and I think the solutions that are going to, to help in coming years are going to be based on artificial intelligence, basically. These are tools that can prioritize your messages and tell you what to do with them and optimize how they are presented to you based on understanding the content of the messages and understanding your work and your habits and your preferences and responding to them. Which is funny because basically we are inventing with technology the role of the traditional secretary or admin that used to do all this extremely effectively before we eliminated many of those positions. So you, you already answered uh, it a little bit, but um, what solutions are going to matter in the upcoming years? Well, this is what I said. I think there will be the solutions that apply AI to, to help us cope with mm -hmm. the overload. I mean, there are many basic solutions that don't do that, that don't need AI and just present this stuff to you in, in better ways. And actually, there is a, a great deal of, of other types of solutions, but mm -hmm. uh, um, what you might do is show the next slide, and I will show you one source of information about this. This is the definitive guide to information overload solutions that I wrote a while back, and it is available as a free download from my website. So you can note the URL there and just go and get a copy. The reason I'm showing it right now is because it has more than 160 different solutions in many categories. So there's a lot going on. However, my thought is AI is going to be the, the main improvement in the coming years over what you see in this book. Okay, thank you for sharing. And everybody, um, go and, and have a look at this book because it, it gives you a guideline um, and loads of information how you can implement this uh, uh, reduce of overload information on a daily basis. So uh, while we're getting here to the end of the webinar, um, I would like to ask you, Nathan, how can our audience contribute? Uh, well, there is uh, many things you can do to help this organization achieve its goals. If we can have the next slide, you will see that we have a great number of channels, actually, that you can engage in. Next slide. There you go. So what do we have here? We have a website which has a blog on it, which you're welcome to go read, search, and find what people have said. You have the Information Overload Resource Center, which is actually on the same site, but you can also reach it to its own URL. And uh, there you can submit material. We have a Twitter feed and Info Overload that we post on daily, and tips, ideas, pointers to, to information, you can check that, and of course you're welcome to retweet everything you see there, and pass the word around. We have a special LinkedIn group that belongs to us, the Information Overload Research Group, that's the name of the group, and uh, we post posts and various interesting information there as well. Uh, we have a newsletter. This newsletter is definitely designed not to overload you. So we usually send it out every two or three months, actually, unless we have something urgent. And we also send announcements of webinars like this one. So you can subscribe to that on our website itself. And we have a YouTube channel, which, which has dozens of vid videos of all kinds about 
information overload that uh, people have recorded over the, the years. And you should take note of that too. Now, in addition to, to watching and, and seeing and reading all this, you should get the word around. Definitely, please, please retweet and, and send to all your friends information about all this. We welcome you to propose stuff, to suggest ideas, to critique what we're doing, to volunteer to do things for us. To, to do that, just send us email or connect to us through our, our uh, site. That's the easiest way to do it. And uh, you can also share your data and insights and results by guest posting on the IO blog or by posting um, items to the LinkedIn group. And please contribute content to the Information Overload uh, Resource Center. It, that's where the information should come from. Fantastic. So there are many, many opportunities um, to, to join in, to, to learn, and also to, to participate. So let's move to the next slide. So um, our next uh, session will be in uh, June. And Nathan, uh, do you have anything uh, you want to add before I close off this webinar? Oh, I think I've talked more than enough. So <laughs> instead of overloading people with more, I will just stress again the last slide. Please engage, communicate, share. Let's make this a, a group activity. Otherwise, we will be talking just to ourselves. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so much, Nathan. And thank you so much, um, listeners, uh, for joining in. And stay tuned for our June webinar. Thank you.